professional video is a video recording service that produces quality video productions at reasonable prices. We produce weddings, reunions, graduations, instructional productions, and church programs. The co-owner and videographer Barry Fairley of Professional Video has over 16 years of experience in video production, working for independent and network affiliate television stations in North and South Carolina. He also has a master's degree in instructional technology and a bachelor of arts degree in television, film, and radio communications. Professional Video's field and studio video production equipment is some of the best video production equipment available. With the combination of the staff's skills, background, and equipment, Professional Video can help you produce a video production that you will be satisfied with and proud of. So, the next time that you have a video production that needs to be done, have it done right. Give us a call at Professional Video, your video connection.
joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms.
We will now have our litany of praise by Sister Ellen Anderson, followed by a selection from the choir. Sister Christina Little will welcome us.
now have words of welcome by Sister Christina Little, followed by a response by Sister Irma Arnett, and a solo by Sister Carolyn Whittington. Now, what does that mean? 
That means that when you are asked to do a service for the Lord, be energetic, be happy to do it. You can do it, do it. That's what he wants you to do, not dragging and being slow. I can't do it, I hate to do it. Well, if you ever had that attitude, hmm. you might as well not do it. You might as well not do it. And number seven, last but not least, is lubricate your spirit with the oil of joy and glad. The joy of Jesus Christ. And serving him is a joy. Serving him is peace. So, so let's see if we can have our Christian tune-up. How often do you tune up your car? Every season, don't you? All right, you should tune up your Christian life every day. Every day. So you can stay on top of everything. And everything will work. Thank you. I hope that I have left a thought for you. Yeah.
was rough, but the going was tough. But Jesus said, with Jesus, we're going to make it somehow. Thank you, Sister Whittington, for that song. I'm going to take that song with me in my heart this week, and I'm going to make it somehow. Now, getting back to our program, we're still celebrating Women's Day, and this is the Woman uh, of the Year portion of the Women's Day celebration. And our theme is looking from whence we've come. And we've come a long way. And at this time, we're going to have a tribute by Sister Isabel Coates. And remember I said we were going to have a deviation in our program. And following Sister Coates, Sister Helen Thompson is going to come with presentation remarks. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Giving honor to God and to the pastor, a first lady, and to our presiding officer, choir, officers, members, and friends. It is indeed a pleasure to be here this afternoon. Um, it's always a blessing to be able to be a part of God's program. Now, I don't know uh, what I could actually say this afternoon, but I think Sister Arnett and Angela uh, Vladdy also have said just about everything we could say because we have certainly had a good time. Right now, I feel like I could just sit right down because they said everything I wanted to say. But God is good, and uh, we just glad to be here. I thank God for being asked to just try to do a little part on the program, because I think it's so fitting that we could be able to say something about Christian women today. Uh, the first thing I wanted to just uh, bring to your attention is about the first woman, which is in Genesis, the second chapter, the 22nd and the 23rd verse, and tells us about Eve, who was the first woman. And we know that Eve was uh, as his wife. I can't go through the whole story because I'm just here for just a few minutes. So uh, I'm reminded of a story when a man had to speak at a, con at a convention. So when they was introducing him, he had to be introduced because he was a, a, a big speaker. And he asked him, say, uh, so the presiding officer, how long do I have to speak? So the uh, master told him, say, you have as long as you want but we'll be leaving at 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't want you to leave me here. So, I'm going to make this very brief. And then I also thought about the Sarah, who's the mother of all nations. And we know Sarah was a great woman. She was an old woman, and she couldn't understand how that she was going to become a mother at her age. But Abraham was astonished too. But we got to remember, with God, all things is possible. Whenever he has a job for you to do, when you give your life to Christ, you will be able to do whatever. We will be able to do the impossible, the things that we think we can't do. But he will make it possible for us. I thought about Mary, who's the mother of Jesus. Now we know that when Mary, when Jesus was born, Mary was Joseph's wife. But Mary had never had any intercession with her husband. And she couldn't understand when the angel came to her and told her that she was going to conceive a son. Well, we know that in the beginning, God had imagined this woman in his own mind that he was going to take Mary and use her womb to bring many men into this world, men and women. And we all realize that it's not a man that has came into this world, that it comes through by a woman. And we know that women is playing a very important role in this country today, in our churches, and in our homes, in our schools, and in our pulpits. Women are really moving on up in the world. I think about Sister Coretta Scott King. She not only 
uh, succeeded in the civil rights field, Coretta Scott King was a partner, a wife, and a mother in the Martin Luther King Jr. story. She made a key contribution in her own rights as the founder of the King Center for Nonviolent Social Change and as the leader of the monument for a national holiday in honor of her slain husband. Now the federal, state, and schools, and local businesses now close their doors on January the 15th of each year in the honor of Sister Coretta Scott King. Women now play a prominent role in our churches today. In our commitment, we have women of the Missionary Society who serve the church in various ways <clears throat> through study, prayer, and giving. We are spreading the gospel to out the world. A wise man once said frequently, when doubtful on how to act in matters of importance, I have received more information and more advice on women than men. <coughs> women have the understanding of the heart, which is better than that of the head. Women, we have come a long way. I can't sometimes get to understand why we get too proud to acknowledge our religious beliefs. It is strange that we should be all ashamed or ignorant about the thing, the very thing that made us what we are. Uh, as a people, I am greatly concerned with the fact that on the standards of education, being that some less emphasis on teaching the word. I can't see any man or woman calling himself educated who has no knowledge of the Bible. We are free to worship and serve God in our own way. <clears throat> we have women in our churches today and in our society. Uh, as I listen to the choir with all our beautiful voices, we have our Sunday school teachers and how we have come in our own, how we work in our own community as missionaries. We women realize that our Christian field is in the world, but our responsibility begins in our own community. The local Christian woman, more than anyone else, has the responsibility of realizing that the church, to realize the unchurch and the unsaved in our area, where the Lord work is concerned, the women of the church are always willing and ready to do their part and more. We have women in the Sunday School Department. We have great teachers. These are Christian women, and the only way they can do this is by keeping God on their side. Uh, we have lawyers, we have doctors, teachers, nurses, and whatever. But we know that the only way that these they can achieve is by the will of God. Women should never take, uh, take their roles as women. We are not to take on the role of the man. We are so sure that we are helpmates to the maid not to try and take them take on too much ourselves. Women are also meant to be sweet and feminine, not to be had and unmeasurable. God put us here all as companion to man, not to get the bad man down and to try to serve as a man ourselves. How can we call ourselves true women and true Christians if we are trying to head a macho man? All right. We have to take our roles in our own home spirit and do the will of God by submitting to him and bringing up to the standard in which he has laid before us. This is not just my say that women should stay home now and have foot and set the foot on the table and just pray not. But how can we be good Christian women? and believes in God that we are not doing his will. <clears throat> we 
have come a long way, and we still have a long way to go. But we must remember, the only way we can reach our goal is by doing it through prayer and by doing his will. When we realize that today, that all these women and all these things that we have done, these are women have helped us to move forward to our present state with God on that side. What you can do to keep women moving forward. Think about it today. What can we do to keep women moving forward and carrying out God's work? As one thing I do believe that someday we may have a woman president. Thank you. <laughs> Just a little something I want to leave with you young people. There ain't not a thing that's not with me. I'm just as healthy as I can be. <laughs> I have arthritis in my knees. And when I talk, I talk with a sneeze. My pulse is weak and my blood is thin, but I'm awful well for the shape I'm in. <laughs> uh, and my diet. But I, my teeth will eventually have to come out. And my diet, I have to think about it. <laughs> I'm overweight, and I cannot get thin, but I'm awful well for the shape I'm in. Amen. <laughs> or support I have in my feet, or I would, be, I would not be able to walk on the streets. Sleeping in the night, me, night after night, and every morning I don't fight. <laughs> my members fail, my head's on a spin. I'm particularly living on asthma, but I am awful well for the shape I'm in. <laughs> the moral of this tale, we unfold. That's for you and me, who are growing old. It's better to say, I'm fine with the grin, then to let them know the shape I'm in. <laughs> How do I know my youth has been spent? Cause my getting up and going has got me. <laughs> but in spite of all this, I am able to grin when I think where my getting up and going has been. Right here in St. Paul. <laughs> Old age is gold. I have heard it said. But sometimes I wonder as I go to bed. My ears in a drawer, my teeth in a cup, my eyes on a shelf, until I get up. <laughs> as I sleep, dry my eyes, I dry my eyes, I sit to my support. Is there anything else I should put on the shelf? When I was young, my slippers were red. I could tick my heels clear over my head. But when I grow old, my slippers were blue. But I still could dance the whole night through. <laughs> now I am old and slipping black. I walk to the corner and tuck myself back. <laughs> the reason I know my youth has spent my getting up and go have God up in me. <laughs> I get up in the morning and dust off my whip, pick up the paper and read the dictionary. If my name is Miss is missing, I know dead. I know I am not dead. So I am I eat a good breakfast and go back to bed. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
now we will have a duet by the Williams Singers. <laughs>
she, uh, one of her daughters is recovering from a virus that we think was a byproduct of Hurricane Fran, otherwise she would be here. And every time I hear the Williams family sing, I think about what my sister Joyce said, and she says, they can, she says, Larry and the Williams family can sing to me any day, any time, any hour. And I just want to echo that. <laughs> they can sing to us, sing to me. I'll, 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 I'll take the burden. They can sing to me any time of the day, night, week, whatever. I, 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 I'll listen and be blessed. And now we've come to a good portion of the program. I'd like to present the former Women of the Year of St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church. was Sister Dorothy Nichols, Dorothy Page Nichols. Sir, 
the year for 1995 was Sister Saluda. Whoever the winner 
is of this cup, your name has already been engraved on the first plaque. And if you would notice, there are 10 more. This cup is to be engraved each year. Also, if you notice I have a smaller bag and a cup. This goes with the individual. Now, I don't know whether or not we're going to leave it here at the church, or it could very well go to the individual's home. That will be decided on with the officials of the church. Matthews 5 and 16 says, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Also, I took note of the, I forgot what you call it, but uh, this person has adjusted her lights. She has her watch set. She does have brakes on, and uh, she did these beautiful ears for a Christian woman. Now this particular individual I met maybe a couple of years ago, a year and a half, we are coming to St. Paul. I found this person to fit the criteria for what we had asked for. And may I say that you did a very good job in selecting this particular individual. She is one whom I have learned to love, one whom I respect highly, one that I feel that if I were to run into a problem, whether it be spiritual, spiritually or whatever, I will feel very comfortable in going to this individual asking for advice. So therefore, so I will not keep you in suspense any longer because I think about two people that know three. <laughs> I would like four. My friend, your selection as the recipient of this cup, who is very well deserving. I think this plaque says, and I don't have my glasses on, but I think it says Geneva Page. Oh, wow. The top. 
total of our morning offering this morning was $442.14. And I'm going to read to you the report in the order of funds. Aletha Mevin, $700. Evelyn Gaddy, $842.
only this robe and crown as much as I do. I don't want to wear it. It's faithful. This is a robe. <laughs> 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 My thing, my, 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 my scene was, my thing was, don't wait till the battle was over, shout, shout now. Shout out. Thank you. 